welcome to another tutorial video. So today's one is using something that we used earlier on in Crafty Advent, but I said in that video I really wanted to try using them on the jelly plate, so that's what we're going to do for this video. So the previous video we created, or I didn't actually show the creation in the video, but I showed the creation that I had created um, using some Sue Wilson poinsettia dies, cutting them from funky foam and also some of her foliage dies and cutting them from funky foam and creating our own layered background stamps and these were some of the results that we got in that video. There's some with heat embossing on, there's some where we sprayed them with water before or after. I also watercolored in some of them as well and that was the finished card that we created in the video. I don't have a finished card for this because we're literally just going to experiment. So we're probably not going to have a finished card at the end of the video, it's just going to be lots more backgrounds but you could easily turn them into cards like the previous ones, or the previous one that I just showed you as well. Um, I'm sure we'll just have beautiful backgrounds that you can just put a die cut or a stamped sentiment on top of and you can finish them off as the perfect Christmas card. So what I've got here is my 6x6 gel press plate and I've put it onto um, a, I think it's a 6x6 or... Oh, it's a six and a half inch square um, acrylic block. It's a Ducrafts Paper Mania one. Um, I just like to put it onto that. So if I wanted to stamp in this direction, you can actually pick up your jelly plate and stamp it down rather than sort of going in blindly and trying to pick it up off of there. Now with um, jelly printing, there are so many different ways that you can do your jelly printing. You can, if you want to, just like add paint all over this and then use it as like an ink pad to pick up the paint and then stamp your images onto something else and then you can also use the ghost print that's left on the plate or you can be um, like more involved with the process and kind of think about what needs to be on the plate in what order and you can layer things up and then put another layer of paint and pull a whole print off in one go um, I think that's going to be a little bit too complicated uh, for me to be able to show in a video um, but it is possible and you probably would want to have a couple of jelly plates because I would think if you wanted the poinsettias in the foreground you would want them to be covered in paint and you stamp onto this and then you would maybe put green on and remove some colour with the, the leaves and stuff so um, I think you could definitely have a play around with that kind of thing but I'm just going to go really basic with these ones and we'll see what kind of results that we get I don't really have a plan in mind so we're just going to go rogue and see what happens. So we've got our beautiful poinsettia stamp and we've got our foliage stamp. I've still got the arrows on them that I was telling you about before um, so I know which way up they go. Not that it particularly matters and we're probably going to get confused with it anyway because it's back to front on the jelly plate because you'll have stamped it onto there and everything which is why the ability to pick it up and stamp might be um, a good option for us. But to go along with this to maybe add a little bit more texture. I don't know whether this is going to be a good idea or not, but I love using embossed pieces of cardstock on my jelly plate because if you don't have stencils or if you don't want to make your stencils dirty, what you can do is emboss a piece of cardstock and then just use the embossed card to create the patterns in here. You could um, emboss a piece of cardstock with a stencil and then use the embossed card to make a pattern and then you wouldn't have to clean any stencils, you wouldn't have to clean off any embossing folders or anything like that and that's why I often like to make funky foam stamps because you don't feel so precious over them you can be a lot more experimental and not feel like you're going to waste like the £20 that you spent on um, that stamp set or the £5 that you spent on a stencil or the 5 or £6 that you might have spent on an embossing folder um, it's just a nice way of being more experimental and taking that fear factor away that you might ruin something that you spent a lot of money on um, because funky foam is usually like I don't know 50p to a pound a sheet um, and then a piece of cardstock is hardly anything when if you think about all of the other things you buy for crafting so yeah I think it's really worth um, playing around with other elements in your stash and if you do want more videos on the jelly plate, do let me know and I can do more tutorial videos on them as well because I really love playing with my jelly plate. 
So I've got a mixture of different paints here. You can use any like acrylic paints on your jelly plate. I am going to go with acrylic paints today. You can use gouache, you can use watercolour, you can use your ink pads, all sorts of different things you can use on the jelly plate. But I'm going to go for a variety of different acrylic paints. Um, so I've got this Artist Pigment acrylic paint from um, Andy Skinner. This one's called Quinacridone Gold. I've also got a beautiful um, Arteza sort of uh, iridescent acrylic paint as well. This one's called Bewitched Autumn Red, which is in the, I think it's in the 20 set of their paints. And then also on the redder side, I've got Rouge and Ruby from the Dina Wakeley range of paints. Then I have got Lime and Evergreen, also from the Dina Wakeley range of paints. I've got another Andy Skinner one, but this is one of his matte chalk paints, and this is Holy Guacamole. Then I've, oh, I've also got another um, Dina Wakeley one, this one's called Fur, and then I've also got, oops, a couple of the green iridescent Arteza ones. I've got Luscious Green and Precious Mint Green, because I wasn't sure if I was going to go for the mintier or the greenier, but the mint actually has a gold mica in it, so that might give some different results as well. And then if we were going to do any layered up kind of prints, or if we were going to try and pull um, excess stuff that's left on the plate, I don't know what we're going to end up with. So I've got um, some buff titanium, just in case. You can definitely just do it with white as well, but I thought um, it would go for like a slightly more vintagey kind of look to the um, pink and re uh, greeny kind of tones that we did with the stamping um, using the actual stamps that we made. I thought maybe the buff titanium would go nicely. So I've got all of those off to the side and I'm going to start with red and we're just going to go in with the poinsettias to begin with and then we'll bring the foliage in later I think. So I think I'm just going to go to begin with a mix of the rouge and the ruby so I'm just going to shake the paint down into the nozzle and then just put a few blobs. I don't want to put too much paint on because um, you can always add a little bit of paint onto the plate even after you've brayed a bit out. But it's a little bit of a waste if you've added too much to begin with because then you end up putting it all on scrap paper. You can use your scrap paper as well but I just find if you go a little bit more on the side of caution with how much paint you're putting out it always works out better for me anyway. So what's on there that's making it I think it's something that's on my brayer oh I think it's where I've peeled off some paint on the side it's giving this funny little pattern I wondered what that was okay so we sort of spread that out nicely we want to turn our brayer so it's resting on the rest so we don't get it on our table then I think I'm going to press the stamp into it but then we also want to press off the extra paint onto a piece of scrap paper as well because um, if we leave the paint on there it's not going to then absorb as well the next time we stamp it down so I'm going to go one stamping up here and we can see if we can get like a whole um, 6x6 jelly print out of this so let's go we've got the paint on there we could use this as another card project but I think we maybe want to have a background ready before we stamp onto um, another piece of card but then we can also line that up and get a second one off of here as well. Obviously you're going to have a funny mishmash in the middle, um, but it still gives a nice kind of result. So we've got that. We can add a little bit of texture into the background of this if we want to, bringing in our um, embossed cardstock. So press lightly and we can just in areas pick up some of the colour and we're going to get that snow kind of pattern in there, which just gives a different look. So we don't want to disturb the poinsettias too much, but just giving a little bit of that will look good. And then a piece of cardstock, this is just my usual 300 DSM smooth white cardstock that I get from, I usually buy it off Craft Stash, it's the Craft UK stuff. That's what I always use. Unless I state otherwise, that's always the white card that I'm using. So press this down, get nice good contact. And then we can peel this off to reveal our gorgeous poinsettias with a little bit of snow in the background. Then we can um, we could either do another red one or we could just move straight onto the green, which I think I'm going to do because um, I'm doing it more for a video rather than you know like sitting here for like two hours making a load of backgrounds. I think the more things we can finish off, probably the more beneficial it's going to be for you. So I've got that excess, most of the excess red off of there, but this, even though this is like um, a leftovers piece, we can still definitely use this. 
and as you're working as well um i've kind of got myself in a, a little bit of a mess i need to move some bits out of the way um you can keep one brayer for your um ready tones i was watching um elizabeth saint hilaire she does a lot of stuff with the jelly plate and she always says have one brayer for your warm tones and one brayer for your cool tones so i'm gonna follow her advice and get another brayer to use for the greens so that we don't have to keep wasting paint by brayering it off onto um, scrap paper and stuff. So I'm going to go with the lime. So a few little bits of lime. And then a little bit of the evergreen. And then I think maybe to tone it down slightly, let's try a little bit of that matte chalk paint in there as well. So this is the Holy Guacamole colour, which is one of his newest colours. It came out in the most recent release from Andy. And then we can use our little brayer this time, which is going to be our green brayer, to roll this out. I think that beading that's happening on there, where, where the paint kind of moves away and you get the tiny little speckles coming through, I'm pretty certain that is because I haven't used this plate in a little while. I mean, I did use it the other day, but I think that was also beading up still. Once you've used it a few times again, it stops doing that. And if you have a new plate, it will do that and then it will stop eventually. It's just the oils in the plate, I think. Um, they just sort of come up to the surface. So we can now press our foliage stamp into this and I've got an idea for this instead of wasting this onto the scrap paper we're gonna stamp this onto here so I can't 100% remember which way round it is I think it maybe goes this way round for the um, stamps that we made and we can press that onto our red one and then we've actually got our green foliage on top of our red background which is really lovely and then if that went that way up then I'm going to need this side of it I think or actually oh, I don't know if that's is that going to work if I stamped this this way up then I'm going to need this side of it so get a little bit more of that foliage and then hopefully this is the right way round we can, I think this is the wrong way around to be honest, it's so funny, you try and figure it out and you still get it the wrong way around, anyway, it's still going to look lovely just having a little bit of foliage on there, we can keep layering this up, that doesn't have to be the end of it, we can keep adding more layers to that one, but we also want to make sure there's not too much extra on there so we can stamp that off, and you can see actually the difference, that is stamping that green just onto white, and that was stamping it over the red. So it also depends if you're using translucent or opaque colours of paint as well. You'll get different results too. So now we've got this. We can do this and get our foliage up onto a layer. We can also do a cool effect actually, which might tone this background down a little bit so our red poinsettias would stand out a little bit more. You see that kind of effect you've got with the red there? We can actually create that ourselves with a little bit of um, paint as well. So I think I might go in with a little bit of the buff titanium just to kind of give it like an aged sort of look and um, tone it down a little bit. If we put a little bit of that out, then... I'm going to get another brayer. You don't need this many brayers. I just have um, a few different ones. I bought myself um, the three like main widths and then I also bought some teeny little ones. They're not brilliant, but they do work. So um, it's quite nice to have them for a few different colours, especially if you want to do something that's like rainbow colours as well. It works really nicely to have a few little ones. We will get more strokes in this, but we're going for a vintagey kind of look anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So what you could do is you could like just load up your brayer and brayer it straight onto your background. But what I was thinking would work nicely is the technique where you scrunch up a piece of scrap paper. And again. And then you just go over the background and press this down and pick up the colour. And you can do this as much as you want. We want to do it quite a lot because we don't want to cover 
the green that we've already got down there. We just want to make it so the green is less busy. And the fresh, if you go to a fresher piece of paper, you're going to pick up more of the paint rather than just going to the same area multiple times. But look at this. You can still use this on another project as well. You've just got like a little bit of um, paint on a, on a piece of copier paper or printer paper. So you can still use that on different projects as well. And then we could also go in with this just to add a little bit of patterning into it as well in those final little areas. Then we can take this and put it over the top. Hopefully this will work how I'm thinking it will. And then I think for the poinsettias on this one, we're going to go with that pearlescent colour. And some of the conacridone gold I think will look really nice. I think it will stand out more. So there you go, you've kind of like muted it down in some areas just a little bit. It didn't quite come out as prominent as I thought it was going to. But that's good because you can always add another layer. But if you covered it up, you'd kind of have just covered it up really. But um, I like that, it just adds a little bit more texture. So then we want to add our poinsettias to this one. So we're going to go with that quinacridone gold. A little bit more, I don't want to get, there's a crusty bit on there, I don't want to get that on the plate. Um, and then also some of the Bewitched Autumn Red as well. Oh, that was quite a lot, that might be too much. And then we'll go back with our Red Brayer. So this is going to be um, definitely more of an autumnal kind of red colour, because we've got that Conactone Gold, which is more on like the orangey kind of side. But I still think it's going to be a really cool result. And for this one, I'm going to put that brayer over the other side. I want to bring this back in, but I want to ink this up and stamp it onto there. So press that onto here. And then pick this up. And I'm not worrying about where the stamp is supposed to line up with how we created it. I think I'm just going to go completely rogue with it and just do it anywhere. So that's not as um, prominent as I thought it was going to be either. Isn't that funny how sometimes you think things are going to be really prominent and then they're not? It is quite a subtle kind of effect, but that's quite nice because it means you can add more layers to your print and give it a different kind of look as well. So that came out slightly more prominent on that side. But I really like that. It's given like a really subtle aged vintage kind of look, which is what we were going for. So I really like how that one's turned out. I might add a bit more to it. Maybe even some splatter later on would look really good on that. Then, what are we going to do next? Um, let's add some of this crinkle to this one. That's probably taken off quite a lot of the pattern. But I think that will look quite nice. We can even wait for this to dry. Oh yeah, I've got an idea. I know what we're going to do. We're going to do a layered one. I know I said we weren't going to be complicated and do a layered one, but I actually really want to try a layered one. So we're going to wait for this to dry. Then we're going to put a little bit of the buff titanium on it. And then we're going to pull off the paint with the buff titanium and use it on the original print so that we can add some buff titanium foliage on top of here. And then hopefully we're going to then pull this print with some green and the green will show through where the foliage is. I'm hoping this will work. Um, I've got an idea in my head, so hopefully it'll work. Actually, if I put a piece of card underneath here, we might be able to see more what this actually looks like. So there is quite a bit of the poinsettia still showing, which is what I wanted. So you want to make, that's not dry, want to make sure it's nice and dry. I think I'll come back. I'll be back in a second. So I think that's just about dry. So what I want to do now is bring in the buff titanium. And I want to... Put a dollop of that in the middle, I don't want too much. And then I want to brayer this over this. I know this is a tiny little brayer to try and get over the whole surface of this, but it'll do. And it just adds more texture to it, as I said earlier. Okay, so I think that is pretty good. Then on this layer, I want to take this foliage and press it into the buff titanium and then I want to bring this one back in and go in a different direction with the foliage. 
so it's not like stamping over the top of where we already stamped it we're going in a different direction so again it's really subtle but I like it it just gives just a little bit of um, difference to your background and then we'll get some more foliage on this one and stamp it over here and you see not being too precise with it you just get this beautiful random kind of effect then I'm hoping this is going to work the way I want it to but I want to just add a little bit more texture into this and if we can press a little bit harder with this we should yeah hopefully pick up a decent amount on there because I'm hoping that we can get the green to show through I'm hoping the the buff titanium isn't too heavy of a colour I'm hoping we can actually get the green to show through so that when we the green will be on the back but then we'll stick the card on it so when we pull it off hopefully we'll see green with the um, titanium buff on top with the red colours on top hopefully um, I don't know whether it's definitely going to happen but that is what I'm aiming for so I'll be back when this is dry okay I think that's probably just about dry enough so let's hope this is going to work how I think it will um, let's go with the darker greens actually so we'll go with evergreen again but we'll bring in the fur green as well and we'll just put you can um, ink up your brayer elsewhere and then put it onto your background as well if you don't want to risk moving things around but we're going for like a vintagey kind of look so I don't think it really matters in this respect so we'll go back in with our green brayer and we're going slightly darker greens this time so hopefully we'll get a nice sort of like dramatic impact and I probably didn't put quite enough paint on there because I'm pulling some of it off so let's do a little bit more um, paint on here and hope we don't pull any more of it off although it's probably just going to add to the vintage look so I'm going to say it'll be a positive so there we go then we're going to put a piece of card on there and press it down and then I'm going to leave this for longer than normal so that hopefully it will pull off all of the layers. I think the idea behind doing this technique is the wet paint that we've just put onto the green is supposed to like rejuvenate the cream and the red from underneath and help pull them off of the plate. So hopefully that is what's going to happen. I mean, as I said, I haven't played with these before, um, so I don't know what's going to happen. And with the jelly plate, you can basically never recreate something. You can, you know, do similar techniques and get a similar result, but you can never really properly, like, 100% recreate something exactly. It always looks different. But that's the fun of the jelly plate, though. That's why I like using a jelly plate, because it always looks different. I'm just going to roll off my green brayer. Oh, okay, it's already um, loosening from the plate, so hopefully, I don't know what this is going to look like, but hopefully it looks like poinsettias, so, oh my goodness, okay, that is um, a lot busier than I thought it was going to look like, uh, it's not quite the result I was going for, but it looks cool though, it looks like really uh, detailed and so many layers in there when whereas we only put three layers in there so the the crumpled paper on top of the poinsettias to begin with was far too much taking off of the paint but we can rectify this though if we do what color should we do we need something that's nice and opaque so maybe let me have a look i'm thinking maybe umber from um, Dina's range would work nicely. I've not used this one before. I think it's like a greeny brown. So we'll go with the green brayer again. And I think what we're gonna do is take the poinsettia stamp and stamp over the background and see what happens. So we'll go with the poinsettia. That's picked up quite a decent amount. I don't know how well that's actually going to stamp off though. 
I don't know if I want to risk it because it's not well. We should have picked it up in all the areas. I think it's going to be subtle. I don't think it's going to be as strong as I wanted it to be. Oh no, it's not too bad. There is some definition in there. I do quite like that actually. Okay, let's do some more. And then put those ones over there. That's not too bad. That is better than I was expecting actually. There we go. That is our very vintagey looking poinsettia one. But the thing with this is I had some leftover poinsettias. I haven't finished off those other cards that I showed you before. If you come back in with some more of the die cuts over the top, um, you could really sort of change it up a little bit. Or if you come in with the sentiment die that I was using on those original cards with these layered stamps. Look how cool that looks. And really masculine looking as well as a Christmas card. You could just put some white snowflake sequins coming off of here or some die cuts or something. And it would give a really cool, like, grungy, masculine Christmas card. You might even be able to get two out of it. I know this is only six by six, but if you like making your smaller cards, you cut it in half and then just do the bottom half of the card grungy on each of them. And then have maybe even the sentiment poking up in the white area as well. So I'm going to leave that one as it is because I think I'm going to get some cool results with that. Then we have this left over. So I'm going to wait for that to dry. And then we're going to use some red paint to pull it off and see if we can get a stark contrast between the brown background and the red of the poinsettias. I think that's just about dry. This time I'm just going to go in with the ruby red paint and I'm going to add more than I did with those green paints before. So hopefully we won't have it pulling off any of the paint and it should just give a nice coverage over the whole plate. Yeah, that's worked a lot better. Okay, then we're going to take another piece of card and again we're going to leave this because we want it to pull off all of that brown as well. So while that's um, sitting on there, I just thought because we created the stamps which reversed the die cuts and then we've put them on the jelly plate and pulled a print which then flips them back the right way round, we can, if we want to, layer actual die cuts back over the top. So you could, if you wanted to, cut this down and layer some die cut poinsettias using the same dies that you created with your stamp with um, to then go over the top of this. You could, even if you wanted to, add a word die into your stamp so that when you then stamped it onto a jelly plate and pulled the print off of it, it'd be back around the right way and if it wasn't as legible as you wanted it to be, you always have the option of putting the die cut back over the top. Could be another kind of, um, you know, experimental sort of way of using your jelly plate and some of your dies and things to really make it look like different cards because, I mean, I think, looking at these three that we've created... And looking at, this was the original card that I made the stamps for. And look how different it looks. We're still using those stamps and a similar colour palette, but look how different it looks. Isn't it crazy how you can use the same supplies but get such a different kind of effect? So if you are getting um, fed up with any of your supplies in your stash, but you know you can't really stretch to buying a few more things, um, just playing with them in a different way. Whether you have a jelly plate or not, you don't have to use a jelly plate. Um, you can use anything you want to really. You can just work on your glass mat and press things into it and it does still work. It gives different results to a jelly plate but it does still work to give you some cool effects. So give that a try as well because I think it does give pretty um, decent like mono printing kind of looks that not as... Um, I mean like, people do call jelly printing mono printing but I feel like real mono printing you do onto a hard surface, so they tend to have a different feel to them. Whereas with jelly printing, you're on a squishy surface, so it really pulls up everything that's on the plate. So it is kind of like a different sort of technique, but you can definitely do it on your glass mat as well with different results too. Um, I also wanted to say, I 
I'm not sure how much more talking time there'll be in this video, so I wanted to say it now. Um, thank you so much for watching my Crafty Advent series this year. This is going to be the last ones. This will be Christmas Day. So Merry Christmas to you all. Hope you've had a really lovely Christmas. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you for watching all of my videos this year, for um, putting up with me not having some some weeks and changing how I want to do my videos and keeping asking you on my Facebook page if you like certain types of videos and stuff as well. I really appreciate you still um, sticking around and watching all of my videos so I just wanted to say a massive thank you and hopefully you've enjoyed the Crafty Advent series. I really have tried to put a lot more effort into it this year and give you so many more ideas with tutorial videos so um, hopefully you've been enjoying them. I really hope you have enjoyed them and please do let me know if you tried any of the techniques or um, if you've been experimenting over your Christmas holiday, if you've had a, the few days off um, maybe you've gone into your craft room when everybody else has fallen asleep in front of the telly and given one of these ideas a go. I'd love to know if you have um, had a go with any of them. I'm sure my mum who will be watching um, has probably gone off into her craft room and uh, had a play with a few of these techniques when she's been watching them throughout the Advent series as well. So thank you so much for watching all of them and uh, let's see if this worked so let's have a look I think it's pulled it all off okay this is quite a bold kind of effect so look at that we've got some of that um titanium buff left over we've got some completely bright red we've got all of these poinsettias on here as well look how cool that looks and I really do want to add the foliage on top, but I'm not sure what paint is going to be the best for getting a a crisp like impression on top of this. Maybe, I don't know if the buff titanium would be white enough or not. Like, because we keep getting the subtle effects, I'm wondering what would be uh, more of a brighter kind of effect to get onto here to really show off the foliage on top of this. Maybe just white, maybe just normal white, or maybe doing the the buff titanium thicker. If I do a thicker layer of it, maybe we can pick up more with the stamp um, and see what kind of effect we'll get that way. Let's do slightly thicker kind of layer and spread this out. I don't want it to be too thick, but I want it to be thicker than some of the other layers that I have previously done to see if we can get like a, a bolder kind of um, impression from our other stamp. So I'm going to move some bits out of the way so I can stamp straight onto that. So let's get our foliage and press it down. Try not to move it because it will squidge around. I think that's picked up more paint though. So hopefully there we go. We just needed more paint. And then it gave a really good effect. Okay, there you go. When you're doing this, if you try it, um, more paint gives really good bolder effects when you're stamping with it. The only trouble is, if you've used more paint in this go round, like you can't use this as easily because you've got more paint on there. But we could try and maybe do another foliage layer like this because we've twisted it in a different direction. I like that, that looks really good. And we could add more poinsettias over the top of this as well, so bringing back in ones that you might have heat embossed or previously die cut out. Oh, I really like that. That looks really good. Oh, I want to carry on and do more now. Should we do one more? Should we try and play with this and do one more? Okay, let's go with um, this one and just pull off some more of this paint so we haven't got so much on our plate and see if we can just get a background layer you can see how much was on there from how much paint is picked up onto here but if we try and just get a subtle background layer by taking some of that off of there and maybe using a little bit of the scrunched up paper as well and because this is like an opaque colour we want to take this print off rather than layering up on top of this because um, if we lay it up on top of it, we would basically ab obliterate whatever we've put underneath it. Um, so you want to take this kind of a, a layer off as an actual background layer and we'll just print on top of this one again. I 
Okay, so we've, ooh, we've got picked up some detail that was left over there as well. Might be able to get this little bit here. We've got a little bit of that too, just to give a little bit of interest in the background. And we can, might be able to pick some more of this up too. There we go. We've got a little bit of extra distressed kind of detail, plus our like snowiness in the background with a little hint of bits of foliage still lurking around there as well. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Then I want to stamp off that foliage actually before the paint dries on there. Okay, then I think what we want to do is we haven't used those pearlescent greens yet. Let's use some pearlescent green and see what kind of effect we can get with the foliage. So maybe this one we are actually going to work from the back of our print upwards. So we're going to go the background, the foliage, and then we'll add some poinsettias over the top, going with more paint to add that bolder poinsettia over the top. I think that'll look good. So we've got a couple of our iridescent colours, and I've got like a hard bit there. I don't want that to go on my plate. This is the Precious Mint Green. And then we've also got the Luscious Green. And then I might throw in a tiny little bit of the lime just to brighten it up as well. And you can mix all your finishes of paint. You don't have to just stick to pearlescent or metallic or um, a, a matte paint. You can definitely mix them in the same print on the layer, which I think is always a lovely idea because, again, it's hard to recreate it. So you do get a very unique kind of effect when you do that. So we'll go in a couple of different directions. And then, oh actually, we can use this to take off the impressions off of this. And because we've got slightly more paint on there again, we can put it onto this print that we made earlier to give it some brighter green foliage. Again, it's really subtle, but I really like that layered effect that you get. And this one, we could actually overlap them maybe. Because we're not worrying about lining up, um, it doesn't really matter if you kind of overlap and change where the foliage is supposed to be going and everything. Look how how well it prints. It's just it's just over a really busy print. It gets lost, but it just adds to the layers, which I think is so, so lovely. But look how well they do print if you just wanted to use this as a palette and pick up the paint and print them. I just wanted to show you a layered kind of effect, but you can definitely just do that if you want to. Rather than using inks to stamp with them, you can stamp with paint. So we've done that, we'll clean off this foliage, then whilst that is still nice and wet, let's print this onto our grungy kind of background, and I reckon some of that grunginess will probably show through the paint that we've got on here. we have still got some grunginess showing through. It is still quite light because it was a light colour underneath the foliage, but I do quite like how that has turned out. Maybe if we add a couple, another layer of foliage, so let's just go with some of the dark green, which is the fur, add a little bit more. And we're not going to just, we're not going to go over the whole plate this time. We're just going to use it like a palette. Like I was just telling you, let's just do that to kind of show you how you can do it. So you can literally just pick this up, ink it up as if this was a giant ink pad. And then stamp it onto your piece. Sorry you can't see everything that I'm doing, but I'm trying to show you it as well as, well as I can. Um, and then pick up a little bit more and stamp in another area. We didn't give enough pressure in that area. Note to self, don't stamp in midair. It just gives a little bit of um, extra interest, which is what we're after. So there we go, we've got darker foliage on there now. Now we've got to go something really bold for the poinsettia. So we want to add a lot of paint onto our surface to be able to do that, I think. And we might, what do we reckon to that? See, we can see that through really nicely there. Okay, we're going to get another print out of this as well. I'm going to wait for that to dry and then put some of the quinacridone um, gold on there and see what happens. So I'll wait for that to dry. 
So I think that is practically dry. You can kind of see when the paint dries. I think this bit is maybe a tiny bit wet, but most of it is dry, I think. I think dry enough for us to be able to put another colour over the top. So I do want to try um, this Quinacridone Gold just to see what happens, just to see if the orange pops really nicely through that dark green. Um, and we might as well. We've already got this paint on the jelly plate and we've already got all of our brayers mucky and... Uh, we're just having fun, so we might as well see what it looks like. Okay, so let's put this on top. You want to do nice firm pressure, it doesn't matter if it squidges underneath your the pressure that you're putting on you just want to you want to make sure you've got a nice contact because otherwise you might get disappointed that it hasn't picked up everything and it's hard to try and put it back down in the same place to pick it up and you know then the paint might be too dry so it's better just to make sure you've got really good contact first in the first instance and then you hopefully won't be disappointed with um, the results that you get you should hopefully get everything off of the plate so I don't know how long this is going to need before we can pull it. I think some of it's coming up. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so not all of it came up, but that is pretty cool of a result. Where did the bright red come from? I guess that was just left on my brayer, maybe. But that's really... It reminds me of, like, Jurassic Park or something. Um, I feel like dinosaurs would belong here. Um, so you could bring in the Dinosaur Stamp Club um, from Tonic and add some dinosaurs to this. It kind of looks like lava and then, like, a, a bit of um, a forest as well. So that would be a cool um, idea for using that one. Then the, what's left on the plate here, I'm just going to use a little bit of um, the scrap paper to pull this up because we now want to go to thick... Um, red paint so that we can actually add some more prominent poinsettias over that green background which is what we were actually working on and we got sidetracked by using up the leftovers of the other one so for this thicker red paint to add the poinsettias onto our green background I'm going to go mostly with the ruby and I'm going to do more than I had been before because we want it to be a bit blobby so that we can pick up more paint with our foam stamp. And then I'm going to mix in a little bit of the um, autumnal, what was it called? Bewitched Autumn Red as well. And we're probably going to get a bit of the orange off that brayer too. So this is quite thick and gloopy. Just move that brayer out of the way. But hopefully this means we're going to get some really decent impressions with the poinsettias. So I'm going to move this here so you can definitely see it. This is the only thing with jelly printing. You end up in such a mess with everything all over your desk. This is why I don't tend to film that many jelly printing videos. Because I often take everything into the dining room and then use the dining table because it's bigger. So we've got lots of nice paint on there. And then... We can print this, and fingers crossed, this will give the bolder result. There we go. Perfect. This is the background that I was kind of working towards. This is what I wanted to achieve, but it just wasn't quite um, coming out as I wanted to. Also, I actually want to be able to get a second impression to go off the other end. So I'm just going to bray her back over, because we've got so much paint on here. Bray her back over... And then you've got another perfect impression to put onto your background piece. We could even add them to something else as well, maybe. So there we go. Beautiful poinsettias. Now, as, as we have got that paint there, let's see what else um, we could add this to. So maybe the one that I said looked a little bit uh, prehistoric. We could just add some poinsettias onto that. You can get Christmas reindeer. I've got a Christmas reindeer stamp that I bought this year, actually. I'm sorry. Christmas dinosaurs, not reindeer. Obviously, you get Christmas reindeer. Um, you can get Christmas dinosaurs because I bought um, an Avery L stamp. So that would work really nicely as a background for that stamp because it reminded me of dinosaurs. And now we've made it look even more Christmassy by adding some subtle poinsettias on there as well. 
so that can be a background for that card. We've also still got more paint. We've got this beautiful scrunched background left over. So let's roll the paint out again and pick up some more poinsettias and put them on the scrunched background. There you go, you can even make use of this. This could be a wrapping paper for a present or it, you could rip it down, use it as collage. Um, we could also, let's just go with um, a normal card size piece. Roll this out again. And then just do a normal card size piece as well. With the poinsettias on and then we could always come back in with the foliage and heat emboss over the top when it's dry because we know that they coordinate together for that because that's how we did the previous video there we go that's how perfectly they stamp just with paint as well we could even maybe flip it and do a secondary impression with a lighter amount of paint on left on there yeah and then we get like a ghostly impression in the background that looks really cool okay so I'm gonna finish the video here because otherwise we're gonna be here for hours playing um, I'm gonna just tidy this up and then I'll come back and show you all the backgrounds that we've created in the video so I've tidied up a little bit I've uh, removed all of the paint off of the jelly plate just doing another messy kind of print I'll show you what that looked like um, just really messy <laughs> literally just like a load of red but I could use this for die cutting I could emboss this put some gilding polish over the top all sorts of different ways of using this up it's got a bit of a sheen to it because of some of the pearlescent paint that was in there that autumn red color um, so really pretty actually even for just adding like a focal um, even well one of these just a poinsettia on there and it's a really grungy kind of Christmas card then so I'll definitely be using that then, um, clean up sheet wise, we've got this piece that we were stamping off on to begin with. We've got this sort of messy piece here. We've got this lovely bit here, which was some of the buff titanium and some of the green that we were stamping off. This was the brayers. I just brayed them out onto there. So we've got those pieces we could use. I added a bit more red onto this. I was picking up some of it off of that red that was left on the jelly plate when I was last here with you. So that's another piece that we could use. We could add more colour to this. Uh, we could do some spray inks over the top of it. We could, um, again, use something to just pick out the snow. We could add more colours to pick out the snow detail on there. We've got our scrunkled up piece of paper with some poinsettias stamped onto it as well. And then we've got all of the pieces that we were actually making. So those are all of the extra pieces. And then all of the bits that we were actually making are this one that we did towards the end um, that has got a little bit of pearlescence in there as well and you've got the uh, first and second generation stamping with the acrylic paint we've got this one that was our first one yeah I think this was the first one that we did with a little bit of the green foliage and some of the buff titanium and I was saying about how you can add your um, die cut poinsettias back over the top if you want to because they should match up now um, with the actual die that we used to create the stamp or that you could just use them offset from the actual uh, background impression to give like um, a proper contrast in some areas but still have the background detail of the previous ones we've also got um, this bright green one that we did which is, is turned out more the way I was expecting um, the backgrounds to kind of turn out and I quite like the way this one has some of the poinsettias just going onto the white with the grungy detail in the background as well gives it a different look and we could trim this into two panels as well if you actually want to see a tutorial video in the new year um, I know there would be Christmas cards, but I could show you kind of like how to turn your um, jelly printed backgrounds into quick and simple cards as well. That might be another idea for a video if you wanted to see that. Um, then we also have this really dark grungy one where we were picking up the umber colour and we picked it up with some um, red tones underneath it, which I thought was 
came out really nicely, especially with that thick um, titanium buff on the, the top of there with the foliage and stamping it in multiple times in different places as well. We've got our really busy, kind of like grungy one, which we actually use the umber to stamp the poinsettias onto as well. There is sort of like an empty area here, but that could be where your focal point is. Um, again, those heat embossed poinsettias uh, would look really nice on this background. Or just a really large, one of Sue Wilson's... Um, really gorgeous like greetings or joyful from her festive collection from this year would look wonderful on here or one of the old um tonic sentiments christmas sentiments they had like merry with a massive christmas going across and there were seasons greetings and a couple of other ones as well they would look lovely on um a background like that too we've got this slightly more um muted and subtle kind of green layered one with a lot more green than red on here because this is one of the ones where we had the green paint and we took some of the paint off with the foliage stamp and then I've layered some more foliage over the top in that brighter green that was left over from another one and then we've added some um, faint kind of poinsettias in a pearlescenty kind of paint on there as well so another really cool look and actually this um, if you cut that into a smaller panel the way that this comes off the edge looks really cool as well with that rough kind of edge and then maybe like a white sentiment down in this area a chunky white sentiment would look really good for that one and then we also have this really grungy one that looked like the dinosaur kind of background but now we've turned it a little bit Christmassy so I have that stamp here because I was hoping to use it I bought that Christmas dinosaur would go really nicely with that because it kind of looks like a prehistoric background with lava erupting in the background so you could actually use some of these elements on top of there as well and take something really grungy and make it look a bit cuter um, with a cute kind of stamp too. So I think that's all of the backgrounds we did but I reckon from, I don't know how long this video is because I keep stopping and starting it but easily we could get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 backgrounds just from the bits that we've done, oh no 14, 15 because there's the other red one over here um, that we've done onto actual cardstock and then we also have the scrappy leftover pieces um, or pieces we were using for texture as well that we could turn into something if we wanted to or a lot of the time when I have been having a big session jelly printing at my dining table I'm left with a load of these leftover pieces like this um, and I tend to be strategic with them so this one I would stop at this stage because I've got some greens and I've got some reds on it like I wouldn't layer uh, like a turquoise or you know something like that over the top of the red because you might get some muddy kind of tone showing and then I would keep these scrap pieces and turn them into an art journal so some of the art journals you've seen me use that have like graph paper, squared paper, isometric grid paper um, just plain printer paper as well they're actually just scraps left over from when I was jelly printing and then I just turn them into an art journal too so you could use all of these bits and pieces to create an art journal as well so really hope you enjoyed this crafty advent video and um, hopefully you've watched all of them by now 25 videos I'm sure that's kept you very busy um, with lots of hopefully more ideas for you to try in the new year or maybe you've been crafting over Christmas or maybe you've still got time off until the new year and you can have a play with some of these ideas so Thank you so much for watching. As I said earlier, I really do appreciate you watching and I really have appreciated you all year and through all of the years that you've been supporting me by watching my videos on YouTube. I really do appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in January because I think this will be my last video for the year unless I'm good and I have another one that I can edit and put up but I think this might be my last one um, until next year. So see you next year. Happy New Year. Bye.